Right folks, still in London, here in London's Covent Garden in fact, and behind me is the Rock and Soul place. Now this is apparently London's oldest chip shop. Been running since 1871, that's 150 years of frying history behind them. We're gonna give it a try today. So, I've just had a walk past, it's really busy, looks very, very popular. Is it popular because it's good, or is it popular because it's in a touristy area? Guess we're gonna have to find out, aren't we? Fingers crossed, it's actually good. Let's go take a look. Right, so I'm taking a look through the menu here. Not only is this London's oldest chip shop, I think it might be one of the most expensive too. It's not cheap here, that's for sure. So what I've decided to go for is a starter platter. So that comes with calamari, some prawn and garlic twists, whatever they might be, and some king prawns in batter. Now that's 12 pounds for that starter. I've also gone for a regular haddock. That's 20 pounds. A large would have been 24. I think we're okay with a regular. And that comes with signature chips and their exquisite tartar sauce, it says here. Guess I'll be the judge of that. Uh, to go along with that, we've also got what they're calling London style sides. So that is homemade coleslaw, gherkins, pickled onion, and a pickled egg. We all know I love a pickled egg. And that's six pounds for those sides. Portion of mushy peas as well for three quid. So it's not a cheap meal, that's for sure. Hopefully it's gonna be a tasty one. Just looking further through the menu here, one thing I have noticed, scampi, 20 pounds. 20 pounds. Do you know what? I'm glad my pal Gary isn't here. He would not be happy with that, would he? 20 pounds. What do these scampi do? A little song and dance for you before you eat them? That's insane. Right, so I've just ordered. First out will be the starter platter. Really looking forward to this. Calamari and prawns. Should be good, that. Right guys, so my starter platter has arrived. It actually smells pretty good. So we've got some calamari here, which unusually seems to be in some kind of breadcrumb rather than a batter. So that should be interesting to try. I guess these are the, uh, the prawn and garlic twists. And we have the king prawns here in batter. That actually looks really good, doesn't it? Alongside this is a little pot of sweet chilli sauce. Apparently this is homemade sweet chilli sauce. So we'll see how that is. So what should we start with? We'll go with a bit of calamari, shall we? Nice and kind of bendy. I hope that's not going to be rubbery. We'll dip it into the sweet chilli, see how that is. Mm. That sweet chilli sauce is really good. It's got a nice kick to it. And the calamari thick and meaty without being chewy which is uh, an art form in itself almost mm. it's really hot <laughs> it's obviously just come out of the deep fryer it's interesting with that breadcrumb on there it does give it a nice crunchy crispy texture mm. that I like now let's try one of these things I mean it look, kind of looks like a an eagle's claw or something, doesn't it? <laughs> so, we'll see how that goes. Again, I'm going to dip this into the sweet chilli because I really like that. This feels really hot on the outside as well, so I've got to go careful, I think. Mmm. Inside, there's bits of prawn. It says it's with garlic, but it's also like a sort of chinese kind of flavour to it. Wrapped in a kind of almost a phyllo. Mm. It's got a good flavour, a nice meaty prawn texture, and it actually goes very nicely with this sweet chilli sauce again. That is really rather nice. Let's move on to these prawns. Well, there's two of these big bad boys on here. Look at those. 
kind of look like a pirate's earrings, don't they? <laughs> Again, incredibly hot. This has obviously all just been freshly cooked. Don't know the best way to do this. Let's just go for it. Get the nice thick end of it. Oh, wow. That is a very, very meaty prawn. Nicely cooked through. Very crispy batter on it. Perhaps a little greasy. But it has been deep fried. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks very much. Are they in a hurry to get rid of me or something? I'm halfway through my starter and they brought the main course out. Now, I didn't ask them to bring it all together, so who knows what's going on with that. But we'll persevere. Back to the prawn. <laughs> like I was saying, a very meaty prawn, nicely battered, a touch on the greasy side on the batter. But very meaty and very tasty. As a starter platter, I think it's nice. I do wonder if it's something that's just bought in though, no, rather than made in-house. I don't think someone's out the back wrapping these prawn and phyllo kind of parcels. I don't think anyone's out the back breadcrumbing the calamari in strips like this. So it may well be something that's just bought in, I don't know. But it's tasty enough. 12 pounds, possibly a little on the strong side, but it's pretty tasty. Okay then guys, so let's focus on this main course now. So we have the haddock here with the chips, really chunky chips to be honest. Take a look at those. Very, very thickly cut. The haddock's got a nice colour to it. Possibly slightly orange. <laughs> Maybe it's been on the sunbed or something. And as you can see underneath, you don't need to zoom in on this, but you'll be able to see it from there. We have the skin on the haddock. Should give it more flavour. Here we have the mushy peas, of course, and the London-style sides with the gherkin, the coleslaw, pickled onion, and pickled eggs, Greeno's favourite. Right, so what are we going to do with these chips? We know how this is done on Greeno Eats. Salt first, then vinegar. And then, just in case we've washed the salt away, a touch more. Perfect. So, we'll give one of these chips a go. Like I say, really thickly cut. Nice enough colour to them. Possibly a little anemic, but not too bad. Mm. It's a good chip nonetheless. A little bit crispy on the outside, but not too much. The inside cooked through very, very nicely. Mm. It does have a nice flavour. Those are pretty good chips. Let's try this exquisite tartar sauce while we're at it. We'll try it with a chip. Just dunk that straight in there. So is this a homemade tartar sauce? I think they, I would have to hope so if they're calling it exquisite, unless they've got a really exquisite one from the cash and carry. Hmm? It's not bad, I wouldn't go as far as exquisite. Could just do with a little more sharpness in there. It's a bit creamy. It's like there's some dill or something in there, but it, you need gherkins or capers or something in there just to give it that little piquancy. It's just lacking that a little bit for me. Hmm. Anyway, fish time. Now I'll spin this round so we can see the fish a little easier as I cook in, cut into it even. We'll see how it looks inside. Quite a nice thick piece of fish there. Like I said, skin on. I won't eat the skin, but it should flavour the fish a little more. So, let's try it with a little bit of the batter from the top, and we'll peel the skin away from the bottom. Nice flakes of fish. You can see it's kind of almost falling apart as I pick it up. 
steaming hot. Mm. It's okay. Quite mildly flavoured. I expected Haddock to have a bit more of a, a distinct flavour to it. It is very mild in flavour. But the fish is cooked nicely. It is nice and fresh. And the batter is actually decent. I'm very particular about batter. It's not my favourite thing in the world. If it's very greasy, I just don't like it. This is not. It's not the crispiest, apart from around the edges. Around the middle here, it's a little soggy, perhaps. But it does taste good. So as I'm making my way through this, the question I'm asking myself is, is this a £20 fish and chips? The fish, like I said, isn't bad. The chips are pretty good, nice thick cut chips. But that's it, with this exquisite tartar sauce, of course. Is it a 20 pound meal just by itself? I don't really think so, to be honest. Um, I mean, you could probably find this for 13, 14, 15 pound elsewhere, I am sure. It's nice, but it's not 20 pound nice. Anyway, I'll put it to one side for a minute. We're gonna move on to some of the sides here. Let's bring the mushy peas in. Now these, hmm. I'm a little bit dubious about. They're a little unnatural green looking for me. I kind of like them a little bit darker, a little bit less artificial looking, um, but we'll give them a try. The taste is what's important, not just the color, I guess. I just think that's a tin pea. I don't think they're making these on, on the premises. That tastes just a lot like any supermarket mushy pea. The peas, the sort of whole peas that are in there aren't solid. They are mushy and the consistency isn't bad, but it does have a very kind of processed flavor that suggests to me these are not being made in house. Hmm, a bit disappointing that. Let's move on to these london style sides so possibly not the most attractive looking plate of food color wise <laughs> it's all a little bit kind of beige and khaki isn't it but <laughs> it's the flavor that matters so let's try this coleslaw not a very creamy one it has to be said and obviously a mayo shortage somewhere in london and it doesn't taste great Very finely shredded vegetables. So it doesn't have really that much crunch to it. Only a little bit. And without a mayo or salad cream or any kind of real proper dressing to hold it all together. Yeah, that's a bit of a shame that. That could and should be a lot better. I'll try the gherkin. Now, this is unusual. Every time I've had a gherkin at a chip shop, or in a chip restaurant, you get a whole one. This has been sliced into little pieces. So I'm not quite sure why, but we'll give it a try. Hmm. Now that's decent. Got a lovely sweet pickle flavor. Still a nice crunch to it. That is a decent gherkin. I just wish it was whole so I could pick it up and have a really good crunch on it, you know? But, the flavour is good. Pickled onion. Obviously this is only one onion that's been cut into little segments. Bit of a stingy portion to be honest when you're paying six quid for this plate of food. And quite a strange flavour to it to be honest. The vinegar. I don't know, it almost tastes off to me. Not as sharp as it should be. No real sweetness to it. I'm not quite sure what it is. I mean, it tastes of vinegar, but not a nice vinegar. <laughs> no, that's a bit strange. And the onion almost feels a bit slimy. So far, it's been a bit of a mixed bag, hasn't it? Is this going to save the day? Greeno's favourite, the pickled egg. Let's try it.
It's not. Not going to save the day. Very squidgy consistency. And again, that same slightly strange vinegar flavour you've got from the pickled onions. Not a clean, crisp flavour. The yolk of the egg doesn't have that creaminess you normally get. No. That is just not right. Right, folks, it's got a little bit busy in here. Tables around us are starting to fill up. So I'm just going to finish up here and we'll summarise everything outside once I've got the bill. Right then, folks, so what is my opinion on a rock and soul place here in Covent Garden? To be honest, I think it's a bit of a tourist trap. The food, I think, was not cooked to order. I think it came out a bit too quickly for my liking. The starters came out very quickly after ordering. And whilst they were piping hot, I just think they came out too quick to have been cooked fresh. The main course came out while I was not even halfway through the starters. So that was obviously already ready. <laughs> it's not great, is it? Even just from a service point of view. Look at the table. If someone's not finished their starters, why are you bringing the main meal out? It makes no sense, does it? Talking of the service, not even an optional service charge, just a service charge on here. 12.5%, £5 and sixpence for the service. And it wasn't even great service, was it? So what are you gonna do? On to the food itself. Like I say, the starter platter was tasty enough. I think it's probably though, just a frozen portion of calamari and prawns, all kind of thrown into the fryer at once. Tasty enough, but not brilliant. Moving on to the haddock and chips. Well, it was okay. The chips were very, very chunky and they were all right. You know, not brilliant, not the best chips I've ever had, but not the worst. Similar for the haddock, I guess. Very mild in flavour. Not very fishy, I thought it would be, having been cooked with the skin on. Just okay. Was it 20 quid okay? Absolutely not. <laughs> Maybe if it had been 12, 13 quid. That would have been fair. 20 pounds for it? Absolutely not. Outrageous. The mushy peas, again, just a tin mushy pea. They're clearly not making them in there. Okay, just one last thing to talk about, the London sides. If that's the best London's got to offer, don't bother. Just get your normal curry sauce. <laughs> Those weren't great at all. So overall the price, it came to 40 pounds and 45 pence, plus another five pound service charge. So 45 pounds and 51 pence. To be honest, I think that's a bit of a rip off for what we got. It's gonna be a two out of five, I think for this. Two out of five is all it deserves. This place, rock and soul place, does not get the green light. More of a red light, I think. Don't bother. Right, onwards and upwards, hopefully. More food reviews from London to come. Hopefully better than the Rock and Soul place here. If you enjoyed the video though, don't forget, click a thumbs up. And if you'd subscribe to the channel, I am always grateful. On to the next one. I'll see you then.